Hey, what's going on, everybody? Frankie Slauson here with another Five Awesome Set video. Now, I know a lot of you people, you know, beforehand, and I appreciate all the comments that I got, you know, from everybody, you know, being cool about the last video that I put up. You know, all of a sudden, you know, the people that told me that I suck or whatever all of a sudden decided to say, oh, it's sad to see you go, Frankie, you know. See? That's just the thing. People are different, you know. People, I, I don't know if people didn't know what they want half the times, but you know. But all that aside, all that aside, I was thinking about, you know, how can I win people over again, you know? And I don't know if this is a this is a start or this is the the full way to do it, but I figure even as a guest that I can find a way to get people, I don't know, maybe on my side again, to, you know, people, you know, the people. The subscribers, the viewers, the ones that I have a lot of love and faith in, uh, didn't, didn't have a lot, of, a lot of love and faith in me because of the whole P.O. Box thing, you know. So I figure, you know, what can I do to win people over? You know, there has to be a way to get people on my good graces again. To make, to, so they know that I am about entertainment, that I can back up my words, that, you know, I am who I say I am, you know. And even though I'm just a guest, even though I've stepped down, I thought about something. You know, back in the day, a lot of people still don't know this, but I was on the radio. I used to do interviews with people. And I figure, you know, to get people back in my good graces, that I need to find somebody. Find somebody to, to interview. But it could just be a regular person. It has to be somebody bigger than that. And this is being this be my first interview in about two and a half, well, about two years and, and a couple months anyway, since uh, the last radio interview I ever did, or the last interview I ever did, and that was with Eric Bischoff. Well, I need to continue that tradition, but I didn't do it in audio format. No, 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 no. no. Audio is not good enough. I had to do it in video format, and I thought, you know, you know, it is fall. Well, not technically fall, but it's it's almost fall, and I figured let's do something. Let's do something that. Uh, a tribute to something, you know, where this channel is all about the 80s and 90s, right, so to speak, love to entertain and whatnot, I'd say let's do a tribute to one of the greatest movies of all time, and you're probably wondering, what would that be? This sums it up, don't you think? Ta-da! Back to the Future. Let's do a tribute to Back to the Future, and let's see if I can, if I can find somebody, anybody that was a part of that film, that somebody that you people would recognize. And I think I did that. I think I did that. So, in this video, I've had this, the privilege and honor to interview somebody who you will not believe. Don't believe me? Well, get a load of this. I'm here with uh, Jeffrey Wiseman. It's Wiseman, right? Correctly? Wiseman. <laughs> Wiseman, yes. And uh, if you guys don't know who he is, I'll let you... I'll let you, Jeffrey, tell him who you are. I'll be like, you know. Oh no, no, no! That that would be ruining it. I, yeah, I'm I'm the answer to a trivia question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy is known for being playing George McFly in the Back to the Future two and three movies. And uh, tell us how you uh, landed that role. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> But I mean, like, you know, obviously I'm sure you had to do an audition for it, I'm sure. And I'm sure there was a few other people that they, you know, that had to audition too. Like, tell us the process of how it all kind of happened. I uh, got a call from a friend of mine who was an agent for lookalikes. Ah. And he asked if I was, if I knew who Crispin Glover was. And I said, of course, um... I'd done a film with Crispin back in 84 at AFI with Dan O'Hurley, and I uh, was fascinated with his work and really liked him and got his phone number and tried to stay in touch a little. And uh, my agent friend asked if I thought that I was about the same height and size as Crispin. I said, no, he's bigger than I and taller than I am. And, uh, I said, what, what, what's this for? And he said, uh, well, I'm looking for a, a photo double for a, f a film. I said, well, is that for the Back to the Future sequel? Of course, he said, uh, not at liberty to say. 
um, hush hush project. They didn't, they didn't want to be charged a lot of extra money and so on and so forth, uh, so they wouldn't, uh, you know, w they change. In fact, the, the Back to the Future two and three scripts were called Paradox, so they didn't want people to know that it was sure. sequel, so they wouldn't be charged extra, knowing how much money that film made. You know, it was the, the original was the highest grossing film of 1985. Huh. So, and and a little bit of trivia that most people don't know that that to be continued at the end of the first film sure was a joke ah so Bob Gale, uh, they, they had never really intended there to be a sequel but you know the studio threw enough money at them four years later whatever to write the sequels and get everyone back at least as much as